It may take a little bit of time, a little bit of patience to get this on properly. The M14 isn't necessarily the easiest of guns to work on, considering it uses a very proprietary system. But, again... Another reason this, pot, this bolt could possibly be locking is the lo bolt release right here, which works on a real model, but in this case it somewhat does on the SEMA M14. You want to push back on that until it snaps forward just like that. Once you've done all that, you want to put the guide bracket assembly back on. The first step of doing this is making sure this little crown assembly right here sits on it properly. There's a small divot on the top of the barrel that sits right in located right there, as you can probably see, or you can't see with the camera. So it's located towards a little bit towards the middle, not quite in the middle. Now that you've had that in place, what you want to do is you want to line this assembly up with it. Make sure it's sitting on there straight, like that. Then you want to take both parts of the assembly and line them up accordingly. It doesn't matter which way you face them, but preferably have the longer end face towards the, uh, the end of the barrel. Okay. Again, this crown assembly right here may be a bit of a pain. But with some patience and some time, you should be able to manage this. Once you have one side on, it should be all uphill from there. Once you have both sides on, then it's even easier. Flip it over, make sure you're not to let go of it, and put this and put this Phillips head screw. It's the longer of the three that we took out, and we screw that in place. Be careful not to overscrew it, seeing as how this is all very low grade of aluminum. It will strip easily, and the screws are generally made of steel, so they end up they end up stripping the aluminum very easily. Now that this is all done, what you want to do is put the spring back in, the spring action, back inside the buffer tube, like this. You should not be able to push any further, just so, you know, like, and you want to take this guide rod, slide it into the spring, like so, and then be careful, make sure it doesn't kink up, make sure it doesn't start knurling up. Once you have it in straight like that, you should be able to snap it in place on the two brackets right here. Or divots, whichever you prefer. My grammar's not the best right now. So you've got the bowl back together. And it should be able just to spring back and go forward. If you did this right, nothing should come loose. The bolt should return, it should go back like that. It should have a little bit of a problem coming here sometimes. That's just how it is, unfortunately. It's not a serious functioning problem. Next, you want to take the top receiver, this part. It's actually a barrel shroud, but it's part of the top receiver, so that's why I call it that. Um, you want to push this on, like that. Make sure this lines up with the uh, with the bracket right here. So you should just be able to push down on it, and it should just snap into place, like so. And then it's not as hard as taking it off, and everything looks clean as that part as that far goes. The next step, just to alleviate any problems of this coming out in the future, is you need to put that you need to put this bar back on. This is just to keep this from popping off, which is just held in there with a narrow, thin uh, rail. I don't know how to quite describe it, but it's a rail of sorts inside there. The track, actually, but okay. Your next step is to put these two small screws back inside here. There's one located near the hop-up, right here, and there's one located here, just in case you forgot. This is where a magnetic tip screwdriver comes in handy, and a good majority of them are. This one apparently isn't. Another way to alleviate this problem is to set the screws, which I should have done before. Okay. Once you have that in place, be able to screw this one in using your finger. Again, a magnetic tip screwdriver helps in this situation. So, another way to help alleviate this problem is to get that on. Is get this part on first. You can set the screw in since it is just a ring right there.
Once that's in place, it should be a little bit easier to get that in. Okay. Constantly doing this because I want to make sure that nothing misaligns while uh, um, I'm assembling the gun. This gun, again, is not the easiest one to work on. That's why we're making this video. And then once you have this screw set in, all you have to do is join these two parts. Attach the Tamiyas again. Be careful. Uh, you may want to retape this particular part because it will pop out next time you try to reassemble it. So what we're going to do, push it back in. Just to make sure it doesn't roll up and doesn't disconnect, you want to grab the other end of the, the cord. Which may already be curled up in there, like this one is. Some patience it really goes a long way with this. Right, now that it's uncurled, you should be able to get it in like that. And then you want to join the two pieces together, slide it on. Make sure that this is on full auto mode, where me which means this U bracket right here is pushed in. Full auto is up, that's semi. So now, let's get that out. You should just be able to slide these two together. Close this door on the back. This is the battery compartment. Snap that down. Make sure this aligns. <coughs> Make sure this aligns properly. You can usually tell because it's perfectly symmetrical, perfectly flush with this. And it should just sit in flat. There you go. That's how you assemble the M14 and how to change the bolt carrier. And thank you for choosing hit guns, and I hope. So keep playing and have fun and keep the keep the sport safe. Don't be stupid with these guns.